You're now diving into the fish tank. Sitting down with Seth Living, Seth. OJ, Ju- Juice Woo! Man, ooh, and this is strictly for them true fans. Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, my main man, OJ McDuffie, and DJ Preach in the tank. What's happening, gentlemen? What's up, Big Seth? What's going on? It's a great day, fellas. It's a great day. You know, we were going to have this guy in the tank a couple of weeks ago, and then, you know, the world had other plans for us, but... Uh, you know, you can always count on Jay Fiedler. So here he is making his first appearance in Tank. Jay, what's going on, man? Seth, Juice, I am doing great and happy to be here on the Tank with you guys. Man, looking good, kid. Looking good. Yeah, you know, I had to put a little gel out to, you know, do the little Pat Riley do up top because <laughs> otherwise I'd be out, you know, with the Juke Pro. As Seth knows uh, all about that. Well, I once did, but now there's just not a whole lot left, man. I, but I'm very familiar with the Jufro. Yes, yeah. I, I grew waste up. Waste of time and money to mess with his hair right now. It's just a waste <laughs> of time and waste of money. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I might just go like you, Juice, soon. Just get the straight edge. Well, you know what, though? You got to make sure you got you to gotta check. You got to test it first to make sure you got a good shaped head, man. Otherwise, <laughs> man, don't, don't do it, man. Just, just comb it over and do what you got to do, Jay. Uh, and there's no turning back once you go. <laughs> once you're gone, there's no turning back. No turning back. So, Jay, look, the Dolphins quarterback position has always been a glamour position, right? Um, and, uh, and, and seems to be, again, you know, with the recent draft pick. And we'll talk about all that stuff. But, you know, your journey, I think, I mean, we're going to talk about you as a, as a Miami Dolphins quarterback. But I think your journey, your journey to Miami and just to the NFL in general is, is almost not a, probably more important, quite frankly, than, than your experience here, as much as we love to talk about your time here. So give us a little background. Talk a little bit. I mean, I know your father, right? The, the, the late, great Kenny Fiedler was a larger-than-life individual and was a legendary basketball, high school basketball yep. coach in, in Oceanside there. Um, and sports were always a part of your family. So talk a little bit about that and why maybe it was football that led the way and, and ultimately took you to Dartmouth. Yeah, well, you know, I, I grew up playing every single sport imaginable. And, uh, you know, like, like most guys, you know, the, there's the big uh, uh, debate nowadays with the multi-sport versus, uh, you know, specialization in youth sports. And, uh, you know, for me, I was, I, I was playing everything. I know, Juice, you, you were the same way uh, growing up. Uh, uh, you know, I played football in, in the fall. And as soon as that, se- that season was over, it was on to basketball and, you know, once basketball was done, you put that ball down and, and you know, it was either baseball or track and field in, mm-hmm. in the springtime. And then you get catch back up in the summertime with your football again. And, uh, uh, you know, for me, that was the way it was through high school. Uh, you know, I, I actually thought, you know, in high school, football probably would have been, you know, third on the list, uh, <laughs> wow. you know, for me. You know, more so just because of the success and, uh, you know, that, that I had in high school and the other sports. Uh, yeah. You know, I grew up in a basketball family, like you mentioned before. You know, my dad was a high school basketball coach. That was, you know, the first passion uh, in, in sports. And, you know, that was kind of the, uh, the the sport that, that lived in, in on Judith Lane in, in Oceanside. Uh, you know, had some had some battles with my brother out in the uh, driveway uh, growing up. And uh, dad was always there to – to give some pointers and tips and, uh, and drills for us to do. Uh, and then, you know, in track and field in high school, you know, I was a, I was a state champion, uh, pentathlon, uh, uh, guys, I had this, the New York state record in, in the pentathlon. If you ask me, I thought I was going to be in the Olympics. Uh, <laughs> That's what, That's you, right. You know, go, I, I had the Dan and Dave posters on my wall <laughs> and, yes, awesome. sir. <laughs> and, and, and all that. But, you know, in the end, uh, you know, football just kind of rose to the top. And, uh, uh, you know, although my team in high school didn't have uh, the same success as my basketball team or or individually in track and field, uh, you know, I did get noticed as an athlete, uh, you know, on the football field. And, uh, you know, we kind of started off one of the first uh, spread offenses, uh, doing a run and shoot offense, uh, you know, back when I was in high school in the late 80s. So, you know, really showcase my ability to get out outside the pocket, throw on the run, do a lot of different things that, you know, scouts uh, and, and recruiters, you know, like to see. So, uh, you know, it took me to uh, to Dartmouth College 
where, you know, again, I was, I was two sport athlete at Dartmouth, uh, played football and ran track. And that was one of the reasons I ended up going there was because of, uh, you know, my, my, my uh, ability to be able to do both. Uh, yeah, you know, damn the education, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that too. That too, you know. <laughs> and the future connections possibly, you know, who knows? Of course, of Man. course. You know, that, that, that was certainly a factor, but, you know, when all things in consider, you know, I was – all the schools I was looking at were, were high academic schools, uh, you know, in the first place. And, uh, uh, you know, when it came down to uh, deciding those, you know, I had uh, uh, the – visit with Stanford. I, I was recruited by Duke and, and, and Virginia uh, and a number of the Ivies, but, uh, you know, the, the, the D1 schools, you know, if you were going to play football, you weren't going to run track, uh, you know, especially as a quarterback, you know, they need you there in spring, spring football. And, right. and every coach that I spoke to said, you know, if, if you're going to make it in, in football as a quarterback, you know, there, there's no way that, uh, you know, we can have you sit and, and be out in spring, uh, spring practices and then put you in, uh, in, in the fall. So the Ivy league was, you know, the direction I went and, uh, uh, you know, happy, happy. I made that decision. Yeah. You're probably smart for not, you know, going and playing spring ball. That's where they try to kill you more than anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I know it. I know. But then, then again, coming off of football season and going right into winter track and spring track wasn't wasn't a you know walk in the park either. Yeah, no doubt. But you had a hell of a you had a hell of a career at Dartmouth at quarterback. You know, you talk about the athleticism, man, and I I witnessed it firsthand. You know, the track and field, the baseball, basketball, uh, everything that you 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 know you talk about growing up, and it translates into football. Most football players, in my opinion, and I might be a little biased. We're, we're the best oh, athletes no. out there anyways. You know what I mean? And you, you, oh, and you, and you showed that off. But I, it's my understanding, Jay, that you got an invite to, to the senior bowl after Dartmouth, but it was, it was as a punter. So you didn't say anything about punting. You talk about all the other things you did, basketball, track and field, you know, football, of course, and baseball, but as a punter. But I heard your dad wasn't having that. He was not having that shit. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what happened <laughs> with the senior bowl. is an interesting story. We – uh I actually got uh, invite, an early invite to the Senior Bowl before, you know, the senior season. And that's kind of how, uh, you know, they were doing it back then. They'd send out some early invites to guys that, that they thought were, uh, uh, were, were going to be uh, ready to go. And then, uh, you know, my senior season at Dartmouth, uh, I had a good season. We, we had a, you know, real good team, but it wasn't as, uh, you know, my junior year was what really stood out to, to everyone. And, you know, I was number one in, in uh, FCS, one double A uh, uh, back then in passing efficiency. Uh, it was it was basically me and Steve McNair were the two one double A quarterbacks. Wow. Backs, you know, on top of all the lists, uh, you know, when it came to, to passing yards, efficiency, total yardage, uh, and uh, you know, and then I had a little bit of a drop off my senior year, and uh, you know, when it came time to the All Star games in the end, I got an invite to. Uh, 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 the East West Shrine game, which I accepted. Uh, and then the senior bowl rescinded uh, the, the invite. And they said, well, you know, we got other, a couple other quarterbacks here, but if you want to still, uh, you know, take that invite that we sent you back in, in June, you could come and be a punter. So, <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, so, so once I had the East West Shrine game uh, invite, I, I said, uh, you know, and, a nice way, I said. Screw you, uh, you know, to the senior bowl. Uh, it's a good thing you were talking to him and not your dad. I bet he wouldn't have been as nice. Exactly, he'd have used some more <laughs> colorful language uh, than that. Uh, but you know, it was it was great. And then and then we also had uh, at the time we had the uh, Ivy League All Star Game, uh, which was an unbelievable trip where they took the seniors in the Ivy League, all the All Star seniors, out to Japan for a week. Wow. Uh, so we traveled to Japan. And then uh, I actually flew right from Japan back to uh, uh, San Francisco where they had the East West Shrine game was in Palo Alto at the time. Uh, and, and, you know, did two, two weeks on the road of, of football in Japan and California. Uh, and then uh, the East West Shrine game, it was, uh, uh, you know, had a great appearance there and, uh, you know, won a co-MVP uh, of the East West Shrine game. It was me and Jeff Garcia were co-MVPs of that game. <laughs> And, uh, and neither one of us got drafted and it took, you know, each of us, uh, you know, probably, 
you know, a minimum of four or five years to, to find our way to a starting job in the NFL. Man, that's so crazy, Seth, because I played in Japan in the Japan Bowl back in the day. So that was back in, what, 92, 93 when I played there. So I didn't know it had transitioned into uh, to the, basically the Ivy League game out there. And Japan was awesome, wasn't it? Tell me about, oh, tell, was, tell me about that trip right there, man. <laughs> I had a blast we, in Japan. Oh, yes. You know, I was, I was the only one that was, you know, still looking forward to, to, to playing anymore. And I had the week, <laughs> uh, you know, the week ahead for the East-West Shrine game. So I couldn't enjoy it as much as, as all the other guys that were, uh, that were on that trip. I don't know, Jay. I know you, man. I bet you <laughs> had <Yeah>. a <laughs> You know he found a way to enjoy early, that Early trip. in the week, I had some fun. All right, you know, all right. you know what? You know what makes me mad, Jay, is that I, I didn't like sushi then. I didn't. I never had it before, and they were just all these amazing spreads of sushi yeah. they kept giving us. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to McDonald's or Burger King right. or whatever KFC down the street. That's when I I know that could be semi normal for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was it was fun out there. They 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 rolled out the red carpet for us. Uh, you know, hung, hanging out in, in Tokyo and, uh, yep. uh, you know, spending a night or two in Rapungi and, uh, your Pungi. <laughs> I heard some, I heard, I heard some Prince songs there for the first time. They hadn't even been released in, in the States yet, but they were in Japan already, man. And that's where I became a huge one, a, a big Prince fan at one point. Yep. Uh, it was a fantastic Rapungi. city. Great experience. <laughs> Very cool. Well, just listening to that almost makes me exhausted. And, <laughs> and that's just your, like the end of your college journey. So, right. So, so screw the senior bowl, right? Fuck them. Uh, East West shrine <laughs> turns out to be a real positive thing, but then the the long road, man, Philadelphia, Amsterdam, uh, there, there was a coaching gig at Hofstra, yep. which by the way, so it was pointed out to me, juice, was Dan Quinn, the coach of the Falcons, was he on that same coaching staff? I'll tell you, that, that staff that we had there and, and, you know, even some of the players, you know, that was, that was a great football room. You know, Dan Quinn was a D-line coach. Uh, Kyle Flood uh, was the offensive line coach. Uh, and, and if you look at Atlanta, uh, Atlanta staff right, right now, there are a number of guys that, that, that wow. Quinn, uh, you know, have relationships way back. Uh, you didn't get the dial up? He didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, Dave, Dave Brock is down there. He was, uh, he was head coach at Delaware and, uh, you know, he's, he's a receiver coach. Raheem Morris was, was a safety on that team. Wow. Uh, you know, and ended up uh, head coach in, in, mm -hmm. in the league. And, you know, he's an assistant down there in, in Atlanta wow. as well. And, uh, you know, that, that was a fun room, fun, uh, fun staff to be a part of. It sounds like it. And then, so a year there, then Minnesota, then Jacksonville. Jay, you're six years into this thing and just grinding it out, right, for any opportunity. Was there ever a point where you were just like, fuck it, I've got an Ivy League education. I've done my football thing. I've had enough of this shit. I'm going to go out and make real money. I thought, you know, well, it's funny. I actually, when I was, you know, coaching at Hofstra for, for those two years, you know, it was 94, 95 in Philadelphia. Uh, I got released in, in 96, uh, actually got picked up, uh, you know, I was, I was over with your boy Kajana in, uh, in Cincinnati for That's about it. two weeks, Juice, uh, yeah. you know, his, <laughs> his rookie year. He was the man, just got drafted uh, uh, there and, uh, um you know, they, they brought me in just, you know, kind of a, a favor uh, uh, to give me a shot. But I was, you know, fifth guy in camp uh, two weeks late into, into their camp. So, you know, really wasn't much of a shot. And then, you know, like you said, I spent two years uh, coaching at Hofstra and, and, and a year playing out in, out in Amsterdam. And during that time, there was definitely, you know, uh, uh, what the heck are you doing right now uh, moments. But uh, – I remember one time my, my high school coach actually uh, uh, used to host a, uh, and still does, he hosts a, uh, a coaches clinic in Long Island that uh, I'd go to all the time and, uh, and meet up with all the coaches and you know, I'd speak, uh, speak at an occasion. And during that, uh, uh, during that clinic, he had uh, one of the coaches who was uh, assistant coach at the New York Jets at the time. He said, you know, listen, uh, you know, Jay's really struggling to get back in the league. He, uh, you know, give him a little pep talk and everything. So, you know, I'm expecting to hear, you know, a little nice most motivational speech and everything. And the first thing he says to me is, you know, you went to Dartmouth, right? Uh, you know, you got an Ivy League education. <laughs> you know, the chances of you getting back in the league are pretty slim. You know, if wow. I were you, I, I'd, you know, get that job on Wall Street and, and, and use that education. And, you know, to me, it was kind of a, a, you know, extra motivation to prove people wrong. Uh, you know, you, you 
you, you know, anytime you have doubters, you, you want to, uh, you know, push forward and, and prove everyone wrong. And then, you know, the other thing that I always felt in the back of my mind was, you know, that degree isn't going anywhere. Right. But my window of opportunity to get back in the NFL is, is, is small. True. You know, so I'm going to exhaust it as, as long as I can as a, a you know, and, you know, what, it ended up, what ended up happening was it was really a last-ditch effort, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, winter, 19, uh, you know, January, February 98. Uh, I put together a, a VHS tapes, you know, with all my highlights <laughs> from, you know, from the East-West Shrine game from college, from the few preseason games that I played in, in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, my agent and, and high school coach ended up putting together a three-page letter, and and you know, I went to the post office, mailed out uh, 30 copies to every single team, and I got one call back. And wow. uh, you know, the real interesting story about that was the the guy who called me was a guy named Chip Myers, who was the uh, quarterback coach for the uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings, and. A few years earlier, he was an assistant coach uh, with Bruce Coslett in New York Jets. Now, my senior year in, in college, we had a freshman on our team named J.J. Coslett, who was an offensive lineman. It was Bruce's son. And if there was anyone in the NFL that actually remembered me from college and, and you know, knew that I had, uh, uh, you know, some, some pretty good games and, and – had that competitive drive with, with a few fourth quarter comebacks and uh you know throughout that senior, senior year it was chip myers because his son was best friends with jj coslett so you know that was the only guy in the nfl you know after four years of you know really not getting any playing time you know i came out in 94 this is 98 you know uh, ivy league guy you know, you know no one really knew who i was except chip myers and uh you know, it was, it was that connection, you know, to Dartmouth that uh, allowed me to get back into the league. And, you know, I got called up from them, uh, you know, went into a workout with five other guys and, uh, you know, really shined uh, during that. And they signed me on the spot. And the rest is history. Uh, you know, uh, played that season in 98 in, in Minnesota. Uh, went to Jacksonville the following year and, and down to Miami in 2000. Yeah, Jacksonville. Huh? Yeah. Go, go there, huh? You know, <laughs> you know. I really try not to bring up too much Jacksonville, Jay. You know, but we have to. I mean, we have to bring it up because I've always thought that it was like it seemed like that game came kind of became like an audition for you, and, and it helped all the people with the Dolphins when we were yeah. out there looking in free agency. But comes to find out that Tom Hecker Jr. actually was watching your final regular season game, even before that playoff game. Exactly. I think, I think it was a game against Cincinnati. He had over 300 yards passing. You know, yeah, take that, much, Cincinnati. Yeah, take that, the nasty Natty. Yeah, they, they had you, what, fifth, you said? That's what they get, right? You had That's to put right. it on them That's like right. that. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much did you see, like, that game and all those other games, your opportunity, you know, to get back in the league? I know you guys are pretty much solidified in your, your playoff position at that point. You were behind Mark Brunel, I think, at that point, right? Yes. And uh, – you know, and then, and how could did you ever think that you know that game in Jacksonville would be Danny's last game and and begin of your career down here in Miami? Well, you know, you you, you never look at it. Uh, you know, you, I wasn't looking ahead certainly uh, at opportunities down the road, uh, but you know, looking back at it, you know, it, it's uh, you know amazing serendipity that uh, you know things just happen a, a certain way, and uh, you know, like you said, uh, you know, the last regular season of uh, Jacksonville, it was a game that we actually needed to get home field advantage through, okay. uh, through the playoffs. So, uh, you know, we did need to get a win. Uh, you know, Cincinnati wasn't, uh, you know, a great team at that time, but, uh, you know, we, we couldn't just go in and roll over and, uh, and win that game. We had, we had to play hard and, you know, it was my first start in the NFL. And, uh, you know, for me, I, you know, I was taking it, uh, uh, you know, as an audition, you know, for everyone in the NFL, right. you know, not knowing that, you know, Miami was, was looking at it down the road. And, uh, uh, you know, certainly, you know, Mark Brunel was, was hurt going into that game. And, and there was question marks going into the game against Miami after the bye week, whether he was going to come back or, 
you know, whether I was going to start. So, you know, as a, as well, I never know, knew that. I never yeah, knew that. Uh, well, that wasn't in the scouting Tom, report. That wasn't well, in the scouting know, report. Tom, Tom Coughlin is, you know, one of those guys, he, you know, he, he's never, t- he's never tipping his hand to anyone. So, you know, no matter what uh, was going on in house, uh, you know, he was going to keep it tight to the vest uh, and make sure that Miami was scouting both of us. And, uh, you know, for, for me, luck, you know, luck of the draw, good situation. I had a great game, uh, you know, going into that and, you know, ended up uh, coming in uh, uh, in that Miami game, uh, you know, re- actually before halftime. Uh, I wasn't going to bring yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah. Whatever, man. We remember. Was that before or after the sprinklers came on? With that was- <laughs> the end on that? What? Fuck. I mean, I tell you what, man. I think I didn't have my helmet on yet, and it was twenty-one nothing. I think I still, it was, it was, it was ugly early in that game. I was yeah. in the owners in the owners box, and I I wanted to leave at halftime. <laughs> Whatever, preach. <laughs> yeah, way to give up on us. You didn't think we had a chance to come back, preach? Golly! So did we score so, in the second half? I'm not sure. So so obviously now we've talked about what was going on behind the scenes, at least from the scouting department, but. Here you are, a free agent, and, you know, I, I, this is your big shot. As you said, your first start, which is – I didn't realize it was your first start. Now you think about it, it makes sense. At 300-yard passing game, your first start. Yep. Clearly showed that you could play at a play, playoff level football. And who all was knocking on the door at that point, Jay? You know, go from fighting and clawing and scratching. Was there anybody else besides the Dolphins? And, you know, what, why Miami? And walk us through what a Dave Wanstead sales pitch sounds like for a free agent well I'll tell you, you know to be honest with you uh you know miami was first to the table uh you know they kind of knew that uh, that that you know they were moving on from dan at the time and uh uh you know for me just just looking at the situation you know it was wide open uh, uh competition uh you know the coach wants that you know told me straight out he said you know we're not giving you a job we're not you know sign you to, to be the starter but we're going to give you the opportunity to compete for it and uh, Damon Heward was coming back uh, as the backup uh, to Dan for a few years and you know they were going to give him a shot to uh, uh, to compete against whoever they brought in uh, which you know ended up being being myself and uh, you know the two of us through uh, you know that off season and, and into the preseason you know, we're going back and forth competing uh, for that starting job. And, and, and I want to get into that in a little bit. Um, but real quick, just going back to that recruiting phase. <laughs> yeah. uh, so from what, you know, so we had to call Brian Levy, right? We couldn't have you on without calling Brian to do a little digging. <laughs> and he said, and it's, it's amazing to d- discuss this now, because, you know, if I think about that quarterback room then and the quarterback room now, the quarterback room this year is going to have uh, an Ivy League quarterback, a yep. Jewish quarterback, and yep. Chan Gailey, you know, and yep. so, so we had some combination of those things with a few less guys, obviously, back then. But Chan Gailey took you to lunch, which makes sense. You got a free agent coming in. You take him to lunch. You're trying to – but he went to Longhorn? Like, they couldn't take you down to Prime 112 or something? They took you to Longhorn? Is that accurate? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, we, we, we were right around the, uh, the facility. Uh, yeah, you know, damn near could have right walked the there. Facility and, and uh, yeah, took, <laughs> took, took the uh, – uh, I don't know what kind of car it was, and it certainly wasn't a limousine over to uh, <laughs> over, over the Longhorn. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, heck, I, I would have been fine with uh, Las Patas over there. Too. Right, <laughs> <laughs> might have been a better choice. Las Patas, yeah. right? That's for sure. You know, and, you know, Jay, I remember that. I remember that 2000 season because once I retired, I was, I was the biggest fan of, of, of obviously of the organization and of the team. And you know, like your whole career, man, nothing was ever handed to you. Ever. So you were in a competition, big time battle. You talk about with Damon Heward. You know, he was like the pretty much going to be the heir apparent to Dan Marino. He had some opportunities to go in there and play. Danny banged up or whatever. Um, and even Danny kind of endorsed him for the job, I think, yeah, he did. at one point. Mm-hmm. You know, so tell me, what was that, that, that competition like? And, you know, I, I, I see how you've handled competition. You seem like you've always come out on top. And, you know, I know that fight in you, big dog. Tell me a little bit about that, that competition you had. Well, no, no doubt. And, uh, you know, we certainly, you know, talked a little bit about my journey just to, just to get there. So, you know, uh, the, the struggles uh, the, to, to get that opportunity, I wasn't going to let anyone uh, outwork me. That, that, that was first and foremost. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, I showed up, uh, you know, I was the first one uh, there, the, the, the second that the, the building was allowed to be open for, 
for off-season work and, uh, you know, spent a lot of time with John Gamble uh, in the off-season, uh, you know, strength and conditioning, getting myself in great shape. Uh, uh, and I thought I had a really good, uh, uh, you know, mini camp and, and, and OTA uh, season with that. And then we get into training camp and, and you know, I'm kind of slated in, uh, you know, in that one position still in a, in a competition. Uh, but we're, 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 you know, heading into that first preseason game. And I, I got a, a twinge in my back uh, that was kind of bothering me for, uh, you know, about a week or so. And, uh, you know. Sure, it wasn't a knife. wasn't a knife or anything, <laughs> was it? Yeah, okay, twinge. Okay, I got gotcha. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we, we, the, the trainers and I, we you know, we couldn't figure it out for, for a little bit uh, of time. But it just kept nagging and it kept getting a, a little bit worse. And it started radiating down the leg a little bit. And, you know, we came to find out that I had a torn uh, labrum in my hip. And, uh, you know, when, when the team uh, was traveling for the first uh, uh, preseason game, I was going under the knife uh, uh, get my hip fixed uh, as, as one of the first uh, arthroscopic hip surgeries. You know, and I had no idea, you know, whether I was going to be able to, you know, even play the season after, you know, after going under the knife, for, you know, for that. But uh, the doctor said, uh, hey, you know, we, we get you back on the field probably in, in three weeks. And, uh, you know, I literally, uh, you know, went into the surgery. The doctor who was there uh, was a great guy, Dr. Mark Philippon. He's, you know, the pioneer of, of hip surgery. Uh, luckily for me, he was, he was based down in Florida at the time. And uh, while the team was away uh, on, on the preseason game, you know, the facility wasn't available for me. He, uh, Dr. Philippon actually had me over sleep over at his house and had me in his pool the next day, wow. uh, getting myself, you know, getting my hip moving again uh, and get me on track, uh, wow. you know, until the, until the trainers came back and, and could resume that, uh, 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 you know, PT and, and getting back. And, you know, 20 days later, I was, uh, you know, back out on the field and, and was able to get in that, that last preseason game uh, and, and, uh, you know, show that I was physically ready to, to start the season. Yeah. One thing we know about you, Jay, man, always tough as hell, man. That's just one, of, one example of, of, your, of your toughness, man, your grit, your grind, and you, and you want to be out there with your teammates, man. But there's also something you got to think about in this whole situation too, between you and Damon, one of you are going to be replacing an icon and tell me about the challenges that was going to be, you know, one of you are going to be replacing Dan Marino and you know how, how they feel about Danny in South Florida. So that was a had to be challenging as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you, you know that that's going to hang over your head. But you know, my philosophy going into it was, you know, I, I don't care. You know, what I do on the field, you know, uh, off the field. You know, number my number one uh, uh, priority was to earn the respect of the guys in the locker room first. Uh, I could care less what the media, the fans, uh, you know, were thinking about it. Uh, you know, going into that, and then number two, just keep any you know distractions you know, of, of, of all the talk about Marina, uh, Marino and, and following him at bay. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't easy except, you, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, that the, 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 the weekly press conferences uh, and conference calls with all the, uh, you know, the opposing uh, uh, media, you know, it was literally the same questions every single week right. over and over again. And it all came back to, you know, following Marino. So, you know, if, it were, if you weren't hearing it from, you know, fans and, and, and people around town, you'd hear it from the opposing media and, and all that. So, you know, the ability to just keep those distractions uh, away and, and focus on, you know, what I had to do uh, to go out and win games and, uh, and help the team succeed, you know, that was, that was where my focus was. Did it ever wear on you, Jay? Did it ever, I, I mean, you know, was there ever a point where you're like, God, is this question ever going to stop? Or did you just kind of accept that that's what it was going to be because Dan, Dan was Dan and, and you had to have this other focus as you just mentioned. Well, well look, uh, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, you know, it, it took me five years to, to get a shot in the NFL. Right. Uh, you know, I was out of the league for two years. You know, there was nothing uh, with any questions or, or uh, uh, criticism that was going to wear on me, uh, you know, for, for that, for that amount of time. Yeah, you were kind of prepped for it. But, you know, in a lot of ways, it might have been it – is, it's interesting that you, you say that. And, look, you, you beat out Damon, and, and that's the way it went. But if, if Damon had taken that position, you know, his, his path was different. And it might have been interesting to see, even though he had a close relationship with Dan, what that would have been like. So, uh, you know, you were, 
you were kind of uh, you were battle worn at that point. It That's sounds right. Like. Yes, I was ready for it. So, Juice, there's something else, and Jay just alluded to the press conferences, um, and there's something else that was important to mention. You know, when I was there, we were an all Jewish PR staff, <laughs> and then we bring in Jay Fiedler. I got to tell you, when you had a press availability, it was almost like the law firm of Fiedler, Green, Golkis, and Levitt every time you, you know, that's something that probably (laughs) never happened before or happen again. Um, And we joke about it, but but seriously, what was it like being a Jewish quarterback? And there there aren't a whole lot of you. What was it like being a Jewish quarterback in South Florida Um, and and maybe the opportunities? And and so as much as you had these other challenges with replacing Dan, you also were bringing something that, that had never been seen down here. Yeah, well, well, certainly, uh, you know, it's funny, you, you, you bring up the press conferences, and I, I got to go back to, you know, the story of my first press conference uh, uh, with the Miami Dolphins when I was introduced, uh, you know, after the signing, and, uh, you know, I'm in the, in the media room, and, and uh, you know, Harvey's kind of in the background overseeing everything, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, one of the questions came up, and, and uh, you also mentioned my dad, and, and my dad owned the summer camp, uh, that I used to go to, uh, you know, uh, as a kid called Brookwood Camp, so, which, you know, I'm now uh, the owner director of. And, you know, my dad was, was the ultimate salesman with that. So he said, you know, hey, make sure at some point you kind of get in, uh, you know, Brookwood Camps on, on that. Camps. <laughs> Family business, <laughs> man. Old pops. So, so I'm still going here now, you know, promoting uh, Brookwood Camps <laughs> as well. But, but we're sitting in, we're sitting in the uh, – uh, uh, you know, in, in the introductory press conference. And, uh, you know, somehow I, I you know, kind of mentioned that my dad owns a summer camp in, in Glen Spade, New York. And, and all of a sudden in the background, I hear that, uh, you know, Harvey's, uh, you know, high pitched voice. Wait, Glen Spade? Hold on. What? You know, he totally just interrupts the whole press conference, comes up, you know, which, which camp is that? I said, you know, Brooklyn camp. And it turns out Harvey went to Brooklyn camps as a kid. And, uh, you know, it was just a, you know, it was a, a random uh, thing that came up. But, you know, you talk about Jewish geography and uh, uh, the connections, uh, you know, that you have. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, back to your original question, you know, being a Jewish quarterback in, in, in South Florida, uh, you know, I probably got invited to every single bar mitzvah and, uh, <laughs> right. you know, and, and wedding around town. And, uh <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was certainly a, a, a fun experience just, you know, being in that, uh, you know, South Florida Jewish community and, and uh, you know, having that status, uh, you know, as, as a Dolphin quarterback. And you know what, Jay, man, and, and you hear that, man, and there's a lot of things that most people don't, don't, don't see. I saw it a lot with you, man. Where'd you get that, that swagger that you have, man? Where'd you, I know you have the toughness, but you also bring a little swag with that toughness, man. Where'd that come from? Is that, is that from, I mean, pops where you grew up or the people you hung out with, man. But you, you had that swagger with you. You still carry. I've seen you recently, and you still have that swagger. Where'd that come from? Well, uh, you know, I think that was growing up in my family. Uh, you know, I, I was, I was always, uh, you know, kind of chasing after my older brother uh, and following around with with all of his friends. But you know, also just growing up with my dad as a, as a, you know, high school basketball coach in, in a New York City high school. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd show up to the, uh, to the practices as a five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old kid. Uh, you know, I was a little kid on the side with the basketball and, and challenging, you know, the high school guys right. to, to one-on-one games or foul <laughs> shooting contest. And, uh, you know, it started all the way back then. And, uh, you know, certainly, uh, uh, you know, Springfield Gardens and, and Queens, New York, you know, had guys with a lot of swagger uh, there. So, so I saw it firsthand. And a lot of shit talk too, huh? A lot oh, of shit absolutely. Talk. absolutely. That was you know, that was that was the introduction to Anthony Mason. You brought him up, uh, you know, earlier. That was, you know, Anthony was was, you know, really like a family member, uh, you know, with us. He mm-hmm. he grew up with just his just his mom and and Queens, and my dad kind of mm-hmm. took on that role of, you know, father figure for him, and and uh, you know, it was more it was more from from Anthony's side that you know he just clung on, you know. Uh, uh, clinged on to, to my dad and and uh uh you know when he went on to, to college and and started getting his opportunities and he had a similar path you know uh as me you know he played overseas and in, in turkey and israel and south america and wow. you know before he got a shot with uh, with pat riley and, and the new york knicks so 
you know, that was something that, you know, a little bit of, you know, going back to my story, a little bit of a blueprint of, you know, how, how much, uh, you know, persistence and, and perseverance, you know, can ultimately, you know, get you to your goal. That's awesome. That is that really awesome. Is. Yeah, that's swag. I need to talk about that. That's swag. And we've talked about that. A lot of people don't, you know, you wouldn't have expected it or they don't think right. about it. They think about Dartmouth and the, and these other things, but yeah, Jay, I always said Jay had a little shit to him, man. He definitely, he definitely, did. definitely. And, and you know, with that, Jay, and we see, we've seen the t-shirts. We had Marty Booker on at one point. We talked about, it was like 14 different quarterbacks he played with during his career. Yep, yep. He almost, you know, he almost got emotional listening to it. Um, <laughs> and, and, and they constantly down here talk about the, the fact that, you know, what, what the quarterback position has been here in, in Miami since Dan retired um and we hope you know ryan fitzpatrick did a remarkable job in difficult circumstances this past year and, and obviously there's a lot of hope of, of what tua can become we want a lot of games with you under center man we want a lot of games I, you were 35 and 17 i think just 35 the first and four years yeah first yeah. four yeah. years yeah. as a yeah. starter um and and there were a lot of factors as to why and and your, your contributions the defense was was ridiculous at that point in time and you had running backs like lamar and, and ricky um, did you ever, and speaking of that defense, did you, you know, I know coach wants that had a certain style of offense that he believed in and, yep. uh, you know, the <laughs> famous right. quote, punting ain't a bad thing. Um, but did, uh, <laughs> did you ever feel any extra pressure? Did the defensive guys, um, were they putting any extra pressure on you guys as an offense to, to maybe put a few more points on the board or, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of wins, but did you ever feel that from the other side of the ball? Uh, you know, not really. Cause you know, like you said, I think, you know, the philosophy that, uh, that, that, that coach kind of, uh, you know, put out there was, uh, you know, he, he basically, uh, you know, he knew how good our defense was yeah. and, you know, he wasn't going to be aggressive on the offensive side. And, you know, he always talked about winning games in the fourth quarter. And I said, Coach, why can't we win it in the first and second <laughs> quarter? Let's, 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 let's open it up a little bit. Uh, you know, but, uh, uh, hey, it was, you know, it, it was a good formula. And, and we won a heck of a lot of games uh, uh, doing it that way. But, uh, you know, I certainly wish that there were some times that, that, that we opened it up uh, – you know, a little bit more, but you know, you saw when we got out to out to leads uh, early on. Uh, you know, it was run, 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 and, and and you know, if it was third and and eight or more, we we'd pass. And uh, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, we were going to try and control the clock and and push it to the fourth quarter and 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 pull out the win in the fourth quarter. But uh, uh, you know, never never from you know, the players on defense, I, I never felt, you know, that kind of pressure uh, to, hey, you know, make it easier on us or, or you know, go out and, and, and put up more points. Uh, you know, I think they, uh, uh, you know, they respected how we, uh, you know, operated on offense. And, 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 Juice, you remember, you know, we had some competitive practices, man. Boy, did we. Oh, Boy, did we. I, I mean, it, there was no, you know – uh, uh, there was no red shirt on, on the quarterback, uh, you know, back then. I mean, I had more bruises from Jason Taylor and seven on seven half line uh, rush than seven on than, seven than, than some games uh, uh, that we played. So, yeah, hey, Seth is right, man. We did win a lot of games, man. You talk about some wins in the fourth quarter. One really, really sticks out in my mind, Jay. And I remember like it was yesterday, man, um, September 23rd, yep. 2001, the first game back after the 911 tragedy, man. And uh, there it is. You lead us back in that fourth quarter right against the Raiders. Shoulder. The Raiders. And I'm going to tell you, I look back, I actually saw a little clip of this the other day. And if your ass doesn't get in the end zone in that last play, game's over, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With no we timeouts. Didn't any, we didn't no, have any timeouts. No timeouts, no nothing, man. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us about that. And, and, of course, you become the cover boy on Sports Illustrated afterwards, man. I mean, that. I know your boys back in New York are like this. That's my dude right there, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That, that was that was that was a great moment, sir. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one one I'll never forget, and uh, you know, just how electric uh, the stadium was. You know, was that that was our first game back from nine eleven? Uh, you know, after we we had uh, the week off uh, when 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 they canceled the games uh, for that, and uh, we came back, and it was just you know the energy of of you know, people getting back to normalcy, which hopefully we get soon, uh, you know, here as well, yeah, uh, no you know, with, with what's going on. But, uh, uh, you know, going back to, to, to that fourth quarter, uh, you know, that last drive, you know, 
in, in today's NFL, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that chance to dive over the end zone because if you rewind a few plays earlier in that drive, I mean, I, I uh, scrambled for, for a first down, uh, uh, you know, scrambled out to the left side and, and uh, ended up sliding, you know, feet first the way, the way everyone told me I, I was supposed to do. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember that Trent Green hit that uh, that knocked him out and basically almost yeah. ended his career, but it was yeah, a similar sure. one on me. Yep. Uh, you know, the safety for Oakland came in and, and you know, stuck his, his uh, helmet right underneath my chin and, and knocked yeah. me right back to the, you know, my head uh, uh, slammed against the ground. You know, I popped up off the ground and uh, and did – you know, one of these <laughs> <laughs> off the screen, and you know, I knew I knew we were still in the two-minute drill, and I think that was when we actually used our last time out. Like, you know, I Give got, you a I, second, huh? Yeah, I said I got up eight count. the ground. They got the standing eight count. I started moving, and James McKnight came up behind me and kind of grabbed me and steadied me, and wow. uh, and James started, you know, waving to the sideline. Uh, you know, uh, to to KO, you know, come out, to, you know, make sure he's okay. And, you know, in, in a second, I kind of shook it off. And, and, you know, back then, we didn't know anything about concussions and, and, right. and what was going on with that. And, you know, and today, uh, they, they, you know, they, they just take me off the field. I wouldn't have a chance. Yeah, you'd have been under that blue protocol. Yeah, yeah, but, protocol. yeah, you know, I, I turned around. I told, I told James, I, I said, hey, you know, don't ever tell anyone to come over here and take me out of the <laughs> That's game. Right. Get, back, That's get right. back in the freaking huddle. And let's go. We're going to go win this game. And, uh and, you know, next thing we know, we had the fourth down play to, to, to Diedrich Ward that, uh, you know, continued to drive. And, and that last play, uh, uh, you know, diving into the end zone with, uh, uh, you know, with four seconds left on the clock. And, and the sweet part about that one was, uh, you know, how I juke Trace Armstrong. Yeah, put a move on Trace, <laughs> man. <laughs> who, who was teammate, obviously, the year before with us, uh, you know, in 2000. And, uh, you know, it was, it was nice to give him a little juke and, and have that, uh, you know, over his head for the rest of the lifetime. <laughs> Jay, do you, do you remember the play call at all? Oh, man, you know. I don't, I don't want to put any pressure on you. You're getting old like me. He just I told us he might have been concussed, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, I don't a, remember. It was a fake, fake toss, a fake 39 toss, uh, boot right. Uh, you know, there were a few other tags in there. Uh, you know, but it was it was really, it was our, our two-point play right. uh, at the time. It was a lot of different options, uh, you know, right. run pass, uh, uh, you know, four guys flooding the, the end zone over the right side. And, uh, you know, once I saw that window and, and – and, you know, saw that I had a chance, you know, it was, it was do or die right then. And, uh, uh, you know, I knew I, I, I had to get across that line. Otherwise, uh, you know, it was, it, it, it was going to come back on me, but, uh, you know, we, that, that was, uh, that was some game, such, such good memories, man. Yeah. And the dirt too, right. Remember that, exactly. that oh, time yeah. of year, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Good stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> And, and, you know, the reality is, I mean, we could talk a lot about football, and, and I think that's a great moment to, to take a break on the football side of it because I want to talk about something perhaps a little bit more interesting, Jay. Uh -oh. uh, we've had a lot of guys on the tank here talk about the epic gains in the back of the charter. Uh, on the way back in the flights, you know, and so after we, wins, after wins only, a, right, Jay? After, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> well, I don't know. Some of those guys in the seventies and eighties, it was yeah, a little right. bit different, right? <laughs> but uh, so in between was a game that that Juice has told us about, um, you know, and you know, there's a rumor that that you were a big Boure guy, uh, and might have had to pay out a few times uh, in Boure, but I, you know, so I don't, I don't. We want to hear. Might have won a few times too. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I want to know. I want to know. Yeah, actually, you know, it was funny. Boo, Boo Ray was more a game, uh, you know, that, that I played uh, down at Jacksonville. It was, uh, you know, the guys in that locker room, uh, you know, put 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 the Dolphins uh, card games to shame. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got there and I actually tried to teach some guys Boo Ray uh, in Miami to play. And, and we ended up settling on, on a game called Seven and a Half. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, seven and a half. Yes, so we so we we played a lot of seven and a half on on the <laughs> uh, on the Dolphins charter games, and you know, heck, I re I remember when when Junior Seau came, and uh, you know, he mm. was certainly a big part of those games uh, uh, as well. You know, we had that one game uh, in the hurricane, a preseason game that we went to to New Orleans, and uh, uh, the hurricane had, j had just hit, and 
you know, they told us, you know, we, we were talking about boycotting the game and, uh, you know, right. because, uh, you know, they were putting orders and, and the, the hurricane was going to hit at the time that we were flying back. And, and they assured us that, you know, we were going to be able to fly back to be with families and, and, and get back and make sure everyone was okay. Uh, so we left New Orleans. We get to fly back halfway in the air. They said, oh, we're going to have to land in Tampa Bay and bus you guys back over to, to across Alligator Alley in the hurricane, you know, <laughs> back to, uh, back to Miami. And, and, uh, you know, it, it was by that time, it was probably like four in the morning that, that we're coming back and, and junior and I were the only two guys that were awake. We were sitting in the back of the bus across <laughs> Alligator Alley watching, you know, uh, watching the bus shake from all the wind and, uh, uh, and playing back there and we we had a blast doing that and uh you know certainly uh you know we we had we had some good games there sam madison was always uh, a, a big part of it mm -hmm. uh you know ricky played a lot uh uh sean wooden uh and, and i got i got a few words for sam madison <laughs> on a seven and a half pot and i'm good pot and i'm good <laughs> <laughs> Seven and a half is a great it. game. That's a great – I remember I think uh, I might have had a couple wins against you, Jay. I know how the rules were in those games where, you know, if you didn't pay up from the week before, you probably – you couldn't play on the plane the next road trip. You know what I mean? So, I, yep. I, I remember an envelope I got from you under my door. I think we are out of San Francisco. And it wasn't very kind of you, Jay. I think you, you had my money in it. And I think it said, fuck you, OJ, or something <laughs> But it was cool, though. I'm just happy to have my money. Hey, you got paid, didn't you? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I love it. That's right, man. Good stuff, man. I, I love, though. I love those games. I love them when you could play, you know, right when you got on the plane. That's, that means you won. Because you couldn't yes. play after yes. a loss. If you, you know, if you lost, there was – some people played later, but especially on a long trip. But for the most part, sit your ass in your seat, eat your food, you know, think about the loss, get ready for the next week. But when you got to win – it was it was a it was a fun time on that plane. Oh yes, no doubt about it. Man, oh man, that's good stuff. You know, we could spend much more time, you know, talking about the current you know, the past, Jay, but you know, we've got you in the tank. So we have to we have to talk about the current dolphin situation. Of I course. mean, think about it. you got, you know, you were there what, what twenty years ago, I think, last time you were up in there. Yeah, uh, sign you know, sign the two thousand, twenty years. How about that? Wow. And imagine this. We've got another Ivy League quarterback in there. Working with Chan Gailey. What are the odds of that, right? Right. <laughs> 20 years later, we're back back to square one. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you – I mean, what do you think about that combo? I love Chan Gailey. I was telling people he's one of the smartest coordinators I've ever been around. I yep. mean, I mean, what we, I think we had a six count one time, Jay, or some six or eight count. I've never heard of, you know, people think he's just trying to draw somebody offside. But he's really – we really uh, do have a count right there. Yes. Yep. You know what yeah, I mean? I mean and, Chan, Chan, Chan was, uh, you know uh, – a tremendous uh, a teacher of the game, uh, you know, just the, the, the fundamentals. I mean, I, I remember, uh, you know, the, the, the first thing I kind of uh, noticed when we were going through install and everything was, you know, how precise he was in, in the run game with run blocking. And I learned a ton just, you know, on how run schemes, uh, you know, operated, uh, you know, just going through, uh, uh, you know, with, with Chan Gailey uh, on that, just, you know, where, where a fullback should fit in uh, on, on a block against a linebacker, you know, how, how the running back should read uh, those. And it certainly helped as a quarterback knowing, you know, when you do have to audible between different runs, you know, what, what's your best look, uh, you know, going against a certain defense and, and what's your best run, uh, you know, to get to with that. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the next thing that, uh, you know, impressed me a, a great deal about Chan was, you know, his ability to game plan and, and create matchups, uh, you know, because, uh, look, he, he, he kept a lot of the stuff that we did pretty simple uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, you know, plays that we had going. You know, we didn't have, uh, you know, 95 plays going into a game, but, uh, you know, he, he made sure that, that we were scattered out so well that, you know, he'd create the right uh, formation and motion to get a great matchup on a simple play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, the, the, those were the two things that, uh, you know, I remember him, be, him being so, uh, you know, effective and efficient uh, as a coordinator with and, and teaching the game and, and game planning, uh, you know, towards an opponent. What do you think uh, Tua can expect from, from Chan? I mean, I know you talk about his teaching, man, but how's he going to treat, treat the young guy? 
you think, in, in, in camp? Well, uh, he, he's going to put some pressure on it. He's going to expect a lot out of him. And, uh, um, you know, but but he's definitely – he's going to teach him a lot. And, uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a great coordinator, uh, you know, for Tua to be around and uh, and certainly, you know, a great uh, veteran quarterback, uh, you know, to learn from. And, and Fitzy, who's, you know, been around the league a long time, been in a lot of different offenses, uh, you know, had some, some success uh, – you know, over the years and, and, and certainly a guy, uh, you know, to model after in terms of, of preparation and, and, and game planning, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, I, I don't care as much as, you know, I'm sure Saban and, and, and Alabama, you know, put into preparation, you know, it's a different level, uh, you yeah. know, anytime you step up uh, to the next level and, and two has still got a lot to learn, uh, you know, to get there. Good stuff. So I'm going to go off script for a second, Juice, and, and then we won't keep you too much longer, Jay. But um, one of the guys that we have as an upcoming guest that we had a chance to sit down with uh, was a guy that, that was with you for a couple seasons, and Ray Lucas. And, uh, you know, Ray is jersey till he dies. He says he's got it on his skin. Lukey Luke. And he, Lukey Luke. And, and you know, we, we talked about Ray. Like, you know, you come from the Jets and you walk into Miami and you're in the quarterback room and it's a jersey guy and a New York guy. And he said you guys hit it off right away. What was that like? I know Ray had a, a tough go at it you know, when, when you went down against Denver and, and he talked a little bit about that Buffalo game. But, but just talk about that relationship with you and Ray in that quarterback room. Oh, I love Ray, man. He, you know, it was, it, it was good to hear that New York accent and uh, Northeast <laughs> accent, you know, down there. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you talk about the swagger, uh, you know, from before. He, you know, Ray had as much swagger as anyone uh, out there. And, uh, you know, we were kind of, we just kind of hit it off and played it off each other uh, on that. And, you know, it was, it, it was great, uh, uh, you know, having him in, you know, I was, I was a guy, you know, a lot, a lot of times, you know, in the locker room that, you know, a little bit more reserved and more, uh, uh, you know, lead by example. And if I had to, you know, get on someone, uh, I, I would, but, uh, you know, I wasn't a, a run the mouth, uh, you know, uh, yell at everyone, uh, you know, type of guy, uh, you know, and I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a word in edgewise when, when Ray was in the room, you know, he, he was just nonstop and, and I had some fun just, just watching him go. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we had, we had a lot of good, uh, you know, good laughs and fun times in, in the quarterback room, uh, when he was around. I can only imagine. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to, when, when that episode posts, we'll make sure to send you a link for that one. You'll have a good time with it for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, and the, the final thing I wanted to ask, and, and, you know, you kind of alluded to it a, a little bit earlier with the camps, South Florida, all these years later, has still remained a very special place for you. I know you, you're down here a few times a year when, when you can be. Um, talk about your work with Brookwood Camps and, and what still brings you down here and other reasons why you just remain connected to the South Florida community. Yeah, well, certainly uh... – you know, South Florida is, is a second home for me. Uh, uh, you know, number one, uh, you know, my grandparents, you know, were, were snowbirds back when I was a kid. So, you know, I was spending time in South Florida when, when Glades Road was, was one lane both ways. Uh, uh, you know, I remember and, and, and Lions Road was, was the end of the earth, uh, you know, <laughs> going out west. But, uh, you know, things, things have certainly changed since then. And, uh, uh, you know, my mom still has still has a house down there, uh, and uh, you know she's she's down there uh, quarantining herself uh, right now. Uh, you know, unfortunately, she can't get back up to New York now to to, to be with the family. Uh, uh, you know, but she has a house down there that uh, you know uh, you know keeps me coming back uh, uh, down to see you know family and 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 friends and. And certainly, uh, you know, to help recruit for, for the summer camp, like you said, for Brookwood camps, uh, you know, we still get a lot of uh, uh, campers and, and staff from down in South Florida area. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a great community. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, call it the sixth borough of New York. And, uh, uh, you know, as a New Yorker, you feel very uh, comfortable and at home in, in South Florida environment. You know, when I first started up my, my football camp, which, you know, I, I know, you know, you might remember I did a, a version of it down in South Florida, you know, throughout my time. We used to host the high school uh, up in Boca, Olympic, what Olympic Heights High School. Olympic Heights, yeah. and, uh, you know, I had all the guys that, that, that came up and, and did that, uh, you know, but I also had my football camp up in uh, in, in Glens Bay at Brookwood Camps, uh, 
uh, and it was under the primetime uh, football camps uh, uh, moniker. Uh, back when I first started the camp up, uh, one of the coaches that, uh, that, that coordinated the camp with me was assistant coach at Poly Prep High School in Brooklyn. And we had about 30 or 40 uh, you know, guys from Poly Prep come up. Two of those guys was, were, were Danny and Luis Flores, who are Brian's younger brothers. Oh, wow. And during that year, uh, you know, Brian was at BC and we needed to get counselors. And, you know, we're an overnight camp. And we need, you know, all, we used to get all our college coaches uh, as counselors. And Brian came over as, as a counselor, uh, primetime camp. So I knew Brian way wow. back when he was <laughs> in, in college. I, I still college talked kid. with, uh, yeah, I still talk with his younger brothers uh, here and there who, who are living in the New York area. And, uh, you know, one's a teacher, one's, one's an equipment manager at Columbia University. And, uh, uh, you know, just such a great family. And, and when he got hired by Miami, I just, uh, I just knew, you know, the character that, that, that he brought the toughness, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, you know, he lived through growing up and, and, and overcame, uh, and certainly the, the mentorship under, under Bill Belichick, I think, uh, uh, you know, Miami's un, under some real good footing right now with Brian Flores at the, at the helm. Great that stuff. is awesome. Great what stuff. are the odds that the Miami Dolphins head coach was once a camp, an overnight camp counselor at J.C. <laughs> football you camp? see that? I, I bring Harvey Green and, and Brian Flores together <laughs> at Brooklyn Camp. I, I won't put anything past you, man. You've learned well from your dad. You've learned very well from your dad. That's awesome. That's great awesome. stuff, Jay. Yep. Cool, man. Thanks for diving Thank in, you, buddy. Jay. Stay safe up there, man. brother. That was great. Don't ever add a token, but the devil in the kitchen.